Hello again. I want to continue uh, with a short lecture on operant conditioning. Uh, this time I want to talk specifically about uh, delivering uh, operant consequences, that is punishments and reinforcers, to use the language of B.F. Skinner. And the topic is technically called schedules of reinforcement. That's uh, what we refer to as delivering um, the consequences, schedules of reinforcement. Now you'll notice that there is no schedule of punishment, or at least there's no schedules of punishment. Uh, that's because in order for punishment to be effective, uh, it needs to be administered very, very consistently. That's how you deliver punishment. Whether that punishment is positive or negative, whether that punishment is psychological or physical, uh, you deliver it consistently in hopes of not terminating behavior, not stopping behavior, right? Because we know that um, you can't do that unless you actually kill the organism, and we don't want to do that. It can only reduce the probability of that behavior occurring again in the future. So since you have to work so hard to punish, um, scientists have discovered that there are different ways in which you can deliver reinforcement and it work more and more effectively. More on that in a moment. So you probably know that reinforcement can be delivered in lots of different ways. I mean, if you are alive, you know that some things you do, you get reinforced for almost immediately, whether that reinforcement be positive, negative, that is added or taken away from you as a consequence, or pleasant, unpleasant, in the case of, say, a reinforcer or a punisher. But you know that the consequences occur sometimes immediately following a behavior, and sometimes um, they don't occur immediately following that behavior. Sometimes they occur immediately following the second behavior, or the fifth behavior, or on average, one out of every ten times. Right. So, for instance, if you go to work and work really, really hard and your boss is not there, then no matter how hard you work, your boss is not going to be able to say good job. However, if your boss is there all the time, it's also possible that your boss won't say good job because your boss might not notice you working very, very hard. If you're a bartender, uh, some people tip you after every drink they order, while other people tip you only after they finish drinking for the entire night. You've noticed if you work in the restaurant, some people tip you very well, some people tip you not so well. So the delivery of reinforcement, the delivery of punishment actually works on schedules. And there's two very basic schedules. The first is called a continuous schedule. And the next is called an intermittent or partial schedule. And most things on this earth work on intermittent or partial schedules. Very infrequently do we find schedules of reinforcement that are continuous, right? That are continuous. Most of the things you do, you don't always get an immediate return for it. Sometimes, most oftentimes, you do things and there is an amount of time that elapses before you get the reinforcer or the punisher, or there's amount, an amount of instances that have to take place before you get the reinforcer or the punisher, right? Whether that be a certain number of days you have to work before you get paid, a certain number of times you have to uh, work very hard before you get noticed, a certain amount of hours you have to study before you make the grade that you want, so on and so forth. To better help you understand continuous versus intermittent reinforcement, I want you to think about um, good guys and bad guys. Now, I don't want you to think about a good guy as being someone who's necessarily nice and a bad guy who's mean. I want you to think about a good guy uh, in the way you think about a Pepsi or a soda machine, right? A snack machine. A good guy is someone very reliable and predictable, right? Let's focus on that term predictable. You know what you're getting. You know what to expect. You know that a good guy is a person who, when they say they're going to be at your house to pick you up at 8 o'clock, they're there at 8 o'clock. 
When they say they're going to call you back, they call you back. When they say they're going to respond to your text, they're responding to your text. A good guy is not going to forget uh, your birthday. A good guy is not going to forget to say thank you. He's not going to forget to say you look nice. He's not going to forget to be kind to your roommates when he comes and picks you up. He's not going to forget to notice and pet your dog who's standing there at his feet um, while he waits on you to get ready for the date. Just like a soda machine, a good guy is predictable. A good guy um, is someone you can have high expectations for, right? Good guys don't let you down. Likewise, the soda machine or the Pepsi machine um, is a very consistent reinforcer. If you put the correct amount of money in this machine and hit the, um, the option that you want, it's going to give you that soda, right? It's a one-to-one -one ratio, and that is what the expectation is. And that expectation is so strong, so powerful, that the first time that soda machine takes your money and doesn't give you something in return, you walk away from that soda machine. Maybe not before you kick it or scream at it, but you walk away. Uh, your relationship with that soda machine is over. Maybe permanently, but certainly temporarily. What I mean is you're not going to stand there and keep putting money in it if it takes your money the first time. Likewise, a good guy, if he forgets your birthday, if he forgets to say thank you, if he forgets to acknowledge your dog, if he forgets to acknowledge your roommate, but he's always done it in the past, all 1,000 times that you've met him in the past, he's done these things, immediately your brain is going to go to that place that says, what's wrong with him? What has changed? What's different? Does he not care about me anymore? In other words, the relationship is going to be challenged because your brain now has this strange dissonance. The expectation is that your boyfriend or the person you're dating, like the soda machine, will reinforce you consistently, continuously. Now, let's think about the bad guy. Just for a moment, remember the bad guy is not bad or mean. The bad guy is merely unpredictable okay he's not abusive he's not negligent he's unpredictable in this way a bad guy is like a slot machine you know if you walk up to a slot machine put five dollars in it and start pulling that handle you may or may not win in fact chances are you won't win because these slot machines like most of these gambling machines are set up to take more money from you than they pay out I mean, that's the way um, casinos make their money. Of course, that doesn't stop your brain from playing. It's exciting, right? Dopamine is being released every time you pull that handle. Handle, Win or lose, dopamine is dripping. And it's giving you this pleasant sense of risk. It's giving you this pleasant uh, reinforcement at the neurological level. Now, how does that slot machine relate to a bad guy or an unpredictable guy? Well, like the unpredictability of winning when you put money in a slot machine and pull the handle, so too is there an unpredictability to the bad guy. When he says he's going to call you back, he may not call you back at the exact same time he tells you. It may be five minutes late. It could be five minutes early, but it could be 20 minutes late. When he um, comes to your house, he may or may not acknowledge your dog. He may or may not have something very nice to say to your roommate. He may or may not be consistent and continuous with his accolades, with his appreciation, with his reinforcers. Now, what does any of this matter? Well, on the most fundamental level, what's interesting is that even though there are situations, interactions with either machine or with actual other humans that are less reliable, that are very unpredictable, we still maintain our relationships with them. In fact, our relationships may even end up being stronger. It may be harder, harder for you to break up with. A guy who is unpredictable, just like it's harder for a person to break up with a machine that is unpredictable.
Again, how many $5 bills would you have to put into the slot machine before you said, you know what, I think it's broken. Now ask yourself, how many dollar bills would you have to put into the soda machine, the snack machine, before you assumed it was broken and walked away? Now let's get a little more specific about the schedules of reinforcement. I told you that there are continuous schedules and there are partial schedules. And I'm more interested in the partial schedules. And there are four of them. The first we call fixed ratio. And that's basically when you deliver or when the machine delivers a reinforcer after an exact number of correct responses, after an exact number of times you do something. And it doesn't matter when you do it. It's just after a certain number. So for instance, if you are selling cars, your company may say, after every five cars you sell, we're going to give you $1,000. If you're selling um, Girl Scout cookies, they may say, after every 100 boxes you sell, we're going to give you a PlayStation 4, right? This is a fixed ratio schedule because the company or the person giving you the reinforcer is telling you exactly how many correct responses you've got to make, how many things you've got to do, regardless of when you get them done, before you get the reinforcer. Fixed interval is another schedule. It's a partial schedule of reinforcement in which you are delivered a reinforcement for the very first correct response you make after a certain amount of time has passed. A good example of this would be the game Jeopardy. It doesn't matter if you know the answer. It doesn't even matter if you click in or you scream out the answer. The only way you can get that answer right is if you wait until after the host, Alex Trebek, has finished the question, or in Jeopardy's case, the statement. At that point, a window of time, a window of opportunity of about five seconds opens from the moment he finishes the question or the statement, however you want to look at it, up until five minutes, you can buzz in. If you buzz in before he finishes, you will not get called on. If you buzz in after the five seconds elapses, you will not get called on. It's the first person to buzz in after the window opens. Variable ratio. Variable ratio is when reinforcement is delivered to you after an average number of correct responses, after an average number of things you do, after an average number of tokens have been played or money has been played or the slot machine, if you notice, has been pulled. The slot machine is a brilliant example of a variable ratio schedule of reinforcement. And what do you know about the variable ratio schedule of reinforcement? It's highly addictive. It's very, very resistant to extinction, meaning it's hard for you to know when the relationship's over. It's hard for you to break up or otherwise walk away from a relationship that's maintained on a variable ratio schedule. That's because you don't really have strong expectations about how often you're going to win, how often as it were, you're going to be reinforced, unlike, say, a soda machine. Again, just like that unpredictable guy, your brain is excited by the prospect of him calling you back and anticipating him calling you back on this varied or variable schedule of reinforcement makes the brain even more excited because dopamine is drip, drip, dripping. Finally, Variable interval schedule of reinforcement. This is when you're reinforced for the first correct response after an average amount of time has passed. Now, in this case, this is like showing up at the bus stop. You don't know exactly what time the bus is going to be there. There is a schedule, but anyone who's ridden the bus knows that buses don't always come on the exact time that they say they're going to come. Traffic breakdowns, 
you name it, can occur. Therefore, when will you get on the bus? How do you know if you're going to get on the bus? Basically, you have to be there after that time window opens. Same with getting on an airplane. Same with checking the oven to see if a cake is ready. Yes, airplanes supposed to take off and land on schedule, but you know that it's not exact. Yes, the instructions on the box say that the cake will be ready after you've cooked it at 350 for 30 minutes. But you and I both know that that's not always the case for a variety of reasons. Not the least of which is your oven may heat differently than the test kitchen where the instructions on this box uh, are based. Excuse me. At keeping the organism guessing, it's not as unpredictable. It's a bit more predictable. Just like with the fixed ratio for reinforcements, the only difference, the dog doesn't know exactly when he's going to get them. He doesn't know how many times he's got to do the trick in order to get reinforced. In the variable ratio scenario, the dog does a trick, then does a second trick and gets reinforced. Then he has to do a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, and only after the ninth time does he get reinforced. Then he has to go 10, 11, and he gets it on the 12th, then 13, 14, 15, 16, and gets it on the 17th does not get it on the 18th, 19th, or 20th. If you notice, on average, on average, the dog is getting a reinforcer, getting a treat about every five tricks he does. The completion of a changing number of responses earns the dog that food reward or that food reinforcer. The next slide is what we call a fixed interval. Imagine, if you will, that you put Fido on a fixed interval of 15 seconds. The dog, Fido, could do tricks all the time, but it's only going to get reinforced for the first trick he does after 15 seconds has elapsed. So, watch the clock. 5, 10, 15 seconds, the dog does a trick and gets reinforced. Now, the dog did tricks before the 15-second interval was up. You see it here beside the number two and beside the number one, which represents five seconds and 10 seconds. However, he did not get reinforced. Again, look, look at the clock. 20 seconds at number four, 25 seconds at number five. And when will the dog get reinforced? Only after he does another trick after the 15-second uh, interval has elapsed. So in this scenario, an organism is getting reinforced on a fixed interval, meaning reinforcers are coming after the first response following a constant or a predictable amount of time. And finally, the variable interval schedule of reinforcement. In this scenario, you're getting reinforced the first response you make after a changing amount of time. So Fido here is not going to get reinforced until an average of 15 seconds has elapsed. Fido doesn't know, have, doesn't know when exactly he's going to get reinforced, but he's going to get reinforced on average for the first response after every 15 seconds. So just like with the fixed interval, six, 60 seconds elapses. Fido does a lot of tricks. However, Fido only gets on average two, three, four total reinforcers. They're not at regular fixed intervals. They're not at knowable intervals. So the dog doesn't know, for instance, like he did with the fixed interval, that he's going to get fed after 15, 30, 45, and 60 seconds. He just knows that he's going to get fed on average about every 15 seconds. Now, finally, let's take a look at these four examples on the screen. What I'd like you to do is tell me or tell yourself what you think each of these represents. Okay, let's take a look at the first one in the top left. A person scrolling through social media 
before they find something really good, something they consider really meaningful. What kind of schedule of reinforcement do you think that is? Well, you're right. It does vary. It's a variable ratio schedule. Remember the variable ratio schedule. Completion of a changing number of responses, right? You don't know how many times you got to scroll. You don't know. You just got to keep scrolling and eventually you'll find something meaningful. Let's take a look at the next one. The man is fishing. What is fishing? Fishing requires that you put lures and bait on a hook, go out into the water or stand at the water's edge and cast your line out into the water at different depths, at different locations for an unspecified amount of time. When does a person fishing expect to actually catch a fish? Well, you're right if you said it. It depends. It varies. It depends on how much time's elapsed, what time of day it is. It's a variable interval schedule, right? It's not just about the number of times you cast the line. It's about when you cast the line. A fish happens to, happens to be wandering by and sees your lure. If you've got a lure out there at that time, if the fish wanders by and you don't have a lure out there, you're not going to catch it. Next, bottom left, a real estate agent gets paid on commission. A real estate agent has to sell a certain number of houses in order to get paid a certain amount of commission. Or maybe the real estate agent gets paid for every house, but then gets a certain amount of commission. Yes, you're right. If you said fixed, because there is a fixed amount that a real estate agent can earn. It's called their rate of commission. Usually it is 3% or 4 or maybe even high as 6%. In this scenario, a real estate agent earns their reinforcement, their commission on a fixed ratio schedule. I mean, if you were working for a realty company, you'd be told from the outset, no matter what you sell, you earn 3% of the sale. That is an example of fixed ratio because it represents the completion of a constant number of responses, every house you sell, in order to get reinforced. You know exactly, predictably, what to expect. Finally, the deals, the daily specials. When do you get the half price bottle of wine? Monday. When do you get the $5 martinis, Svetka martinis? Fridays. What is this an example of? If you said fixed, you're right because it's fixed on every Monday, every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, but it's fixed interval. Fixed interval. What makes it fixed interval and not fixed ratio? It doesn't matter how many times you go to this restaurant. You're only going to get the half price bottle of wine deal if you go on, that's right, Mondays. Again, fixed interval relates to being reinforced the first time after a certain amount of time has elapsed. So the first response that you do correctly after a certain amount of time has elapsed refers to a fixed interval schedule. Now that's all I have. I hope this has been helpful. Again, take a look at your homeworks and reach out to me if you'd like me to give you the correct answer for those. There are some examples of um, the schedules reinforcement in your homework, and I hope you try your hand at those. All right. Take care.